Welcome back. So in the last lecture, we cooked up a simple linear regression example with one input variable A and one outcome variable B, where we knew the answer. We knew the model was linear relating A and B. We knew the slope. And from noisy data, we saw that we could recover a pretty good approximation of that slope using the least squares best fits uh, from the pseudo inverse of the A matrix. Okay, And now what we're going to show you is how you can do this for higher dimensional data sets, where instead of just having a single uh, factor A that's the input to your model, you might have multiple factors A1, A2, A3, that could all be used to build a prediction of, of your outcome variable B. So maybe I have four or five or six different things I measure, a, you know, different variables I measure, and I want to build a linear regression model from those five or six variables to this outcome B. Okay, again, this could be demographic information, age, uh, sex, weight, uh, diet, things like that, and B could be risk of a heart attack. Okay, something like that. And again, you can do that by collecting uh, these measurements in these column vectors of A of those input factors, and measurements in this column vector of B of the outcome risk for a number of individual patients. Those would be the rows of this equation. And you would solve for the best fit slope X uh, of that model using this pseudo inverse here of the A matrix times the outcome vector B. Okay, and you can do this in a simple example for 1D. Uh, in this next example, we're going to load this um, Portland cement data. So it's in um, this, this data folder under uh, hauled ingredients.csv and hauled heat.csv. Uh, this is a built-in example in MATLAB that we have converted into, uh, into a CSV file and you can load here. And the idea is um, when you mix concrete, it gets hotter, okay, it generates heat. And so what this data set consists of are 13 experiments where you have essentially four possible ingredients that you can mix up to make cement. Okay, so this has four columns, uh, and each row is one of 13 experiments. Okay, so I take a particular mixture of these four ingredients, I mix them up, and I measure how much heat was generated um, in that experiment, that would be the first entry of this B, uh, this B vector would be the amount of heat from those ingredients. Then the next row would be another experiment where I mix up a different mixture of ingredients for cement and I see what heat that generates and so on and so forth. And what you might want to do is build a model so that if you had a new mixture of ingredients, you could predict how much heat would be generated by that cement mixture as it, as it uh, hardens. And so what we're going to do is we're going to approximate, we're going to find the best fit slope x that maps these four features into this outcome heat variable here. Okay, And we're going to, you know, in principle, that would allow us, that model would allow us to predict the heat generation from future uh, mixtures that we haven't actually tried out yet. Okay. So very simple. Again, we're going to base this on the pseudo inverse. We're going to compute the SVD. We're going to uh, compute the pseudo inverse to find this best fit slope x. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plot. Let me just do this one more time. We're going to plot the actual heat data. So this is probably in like temperature on the y-axis for these, uh, these 13 different ingredient mixtures, these 13 different experiments that we have. And what you see is that the, the true heat data here in white actually matches very nicely the approximation of our model, this regression model in blue. Okay, so this shows that you can build a pretty good model that captures most of, uh, of the mapping from the ingredient mixture to the heat uh, generated by curing that cement. Now, I should point out that this is, I'm being a little dodgy here. So, in general, it's a bad idea to take all of your data to train a model and then to plot and show that you can fit the training data with your model. That's kind of cheating. And maybe I overfit the training data. Maybe, um, maybe I overfit the slope of that line to the particular training data. 
And so what you would actually do in practice generally is you would take maybe only the first 10 experiments and you'd use those first 10 experiments to build a model for X. And then you'd test that model on the remaining three experiments to see if it can work on a holdout data set that you've withheld to test on. Okay, this is the, the basis of all of statistical learning and machine learning is splitting your data into a training section and a test section and holding out some of your data so you can test your model uh, and, and not have it be biased. So really, really important. Of course, I'm completely glossing over that here, uh, but I want you to, to be aware that in, in reality, you would actually have to hold out some of your data for testing to see if your model really did a good job. Okay, we're gonna talk a lot more about this in our book, uh, Data Driven Science and Engineering. Uh, many, many chapters are gonna be devoted to machine learning and how you um, validate and cross validate uh, your data by holding out, holding out, or validate your model by holding out some of your data. Okay, thank you. <laughs>